What's up folks, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com about to start the unboxing of a Traxxas Emax. What? Yep, Traxxas Emax, brushed edition. And this is weird for me because I've done these before. I've unboxed two of these before. The thing is, the last one that I unboxed, I unboxed in, I think it was 2001. So it's been quite a long time since I've had a box of one of these. I got my first one when they first came out. I got the first one at my local hobby shop. I was super, super stoked about it and got another one later. I did two whole project vehicles uh, with them. One of them actually st uh, stopped a little bit prematurely. I put a lot into. Uh, I turned both of them into brushless Emaxes back then, back in 2001 when brushless technology was very new to the uh, land world, but here we go all the way back to the beginning to brushed edition Emax with Titan 550 motors and a 14 4 volt uh, System this one actually comes with the 16.8 volt capable EVX 2 and it does have two seven cell battery packs in it instead of the old six But uh, let me open this thing up and see what it looks like All right, here's this big old heavy thing. And I like to get the not so cool stuff, not so interesting stuff out of the way first, but this actually is a little bit interesting for a change in that there's so much extra stuff included with the package. So we've got some extra body clips. It only has two pre-installed. It comes with those. It comes with optional gearing spur gear. This is actually a smaller spur, 62 tooth designed for high speed runs so that they can get the the nice marketing numbers out there of what its top speed is but they then recommend that you don't use that gearing too much these are battery spacers for using six cell or six cell sized batteries very interesting uh, odd shapes uh, tool bag has a bunch of stuff in it i don't know why they included the 17 millimeter uh, hub uh, hex wrench in here. This one doesn't have 17 millimeter uh, hubs on it, but they included it and they do have a bunch of stuff in here. So that's cool. And then shock. Okay, this is all just the extra shock parts because this has eight shocks. So it has the, the extra preload spacers and pistons and uh, stoppers for all eight shocks. So that's all that you get here. Uh, I do not plan to use this because it's pretty much recommended that you don't use this unless you're just going straight and then you're going to let the motor cool down. It's kind of kind of weird, kind of whack, but I'm going to put all this back and then get the radio set out of the way, the controller and the transmitter. Uh, this particular model that I got does come with the, the Traxxas Link, uh, the, the TQ 2.4 gigahertz radio set. And uh, this one has the same case as the AM radios did for the longest time. Same, same feel, same ergonomics as the original from my first Emacs. But this one is 2.4 gigahertz and it does have the multifunction dial on it, which you can set, you can control what that does according to these two little buttons down here. This whole menu system that you have to navigate through, it's kind of a pain, but it is nice to have those extra features. They give you a cheat sheet down here. You can see it only uses four AA batteries compared to the old six, uh, eight actually. And this is a little, a tree of how the menu goes. If you push this button this many times, and then you push this button this many times, and then the light will blink green and it'll blink red, and you have to count. And no, well, it's nice to have that cheat sheet with you if you want to make some adjustments in the field without having to lug your whole manual around. So that gets that out of the way. And now I can focus on just the entire truck itself, the entire truck, the whole thing, the entire truck, not just the tires. No, I hate this. This really just annoys me. Uh, these, these vehicles are uh, really packed into their containers and they tend to embed themselves into the, the, uh, the packing material, especially the styrofoam stuff. These are these tires were really, really, really pushed in there, left some deep 
indents, so that takes some time to get that all cleared away. Not a good look for it, but regardless, here's the, the entire vehicle, the entire truck. The Traxxas E-Max, it is longer nowadays than it used to be. They have lengthened out the chassis. They've actually given it an entirely new main chassis. You'll see that in a minute. But uh, same basic body styling. They've updated the, the graphics on it. Um, pretty decent looking graphics, I think. But for the most part, it still looks like an Emax ever did. Uh, so that's kind of cool for the, the, you know, the nostalgia aspect of it. The suspension, just as plush as it's ever been. Probably a little bit under dampened too. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely not set up for racing. It's set up for off-roading, like real off-roading. And uh, it was a great thing that, that the T-Max originally and then the E-Max brought to the RC world was, was being able to go over really rough terrain at speed, which was something that wasn't very common at the time and, and it was really unheard of for monster trucks because monster trucks previously were mostly uh, either... Uh, either they had relatively small tires and they were relatively small in general, or if they were big, then they had solid axles. And those just don't handle speed well, no matter what, just period. But the, the Maxes give you all this suspension travel, which lets you, uh, you know, hold your speed and take on some pretty rough stuff, which is really cool. Now, taking the body off, I'm going to get some of these warnings out of the way. Say use Traxxas connectors. Uh, easy setup tips for the EZ EVX2, telling you how to use the setup button uh, and how to calibrate it and also how to switch between the modes. I'm trying to see what this corresponds to. Maybe it'll say back here. Here we go. Standard mode, race mode, and training mode. All right, get these out of the way because nobody cares about reading stuff, right? We want to see the actual vehicle. So there it is. There is the chassis. Get this shadow out of the way. And you can see it's much more open than it used to be. A lot of a lot more flat space. And it has these different newer style of, of uh, battery trays and battery hold downs. We're going to actually zoom in on that real quick right here and show you just how easy this is. Uh, it just slides right out like that. It doesn't even use body clips anymore, which is great. Uh, it's just way more convenient uh, and just much, 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 much easier to use. Uh, still has two Titan 550 cans. These were, I believe, 21 turn motors. These are not the, the 12 turn ones that are used on the uh, on the 1 10th scales. Don't know why I left the camera pointing away from them. But uh, these are hooked up to the single waterproof ESC. It also has a waterproof receiver box over here. And this one has dual waterproof servos that are working together. The original used to come with just one and it was, it was kind of underpowered, I had to say. Uh, other things that are, that are new and interesting, I'm just fascinated by all this open space right here really gives you a lot of extra contrast against uh, how high up the motors are mounted. It really makes you feel like, why don't they move these back and down? Uh, a lot of conversions were done back in the old days to, to lower the motors uh, down because the, the center of gravity on this thing really is pretty high. But uh, we'll, see, we'll see how the performance actually works out. The batteries are included, as you see, the two seven cell 3000 milliamp hour nickel metal hydrides. Um, you know, they'll, they will more than, more than get you going. Definitely much faster than uh, six cells used to be. And they've lengthened the chassis to be able to accommodate those longer packs and also to help with stability. So when you go faster, shorter wheelbase is a little bit tougher to, to keep wheels down but lengthening it out will definitely give it more stability at speed. And then let me look at some other details. These shock towers now have uh, the better adjustable mounts with a square style uh, compared to the old, old round ones. And it looks like the bulkheads are exactly the same. If they're not exactly the same, they're darn close to 
what they used to be. Let me see if I can get a closer look at these front ones, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's hard, kind of hard to see in there, but those were definitely the weak point of all of the maxes of all time. There's those bulkheads, they would always end up snapping off. And oftentimes, uh, back in the day, they would, they would actually come out of the mold. You'd get brand new ones and they'd be warped because they had been cooled down straight out of the mold too quickly and actually didn't, didn't uh, line up properly. <laughs> so we'll see uh, how well these hold up now. Uh, they do have much, much better drive shafts these days than in the old days. Sorry, I'm these days than in the old days. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of comparison to the to the old ones. If you haven't seen the old ones, it's not going to be that relevant to you, but it's my experience, so I'm sharing it. Much, much thicker drive shafts. These were a problem if you started putting extra power into your vehicle, you know, upgrading to stronger motors, but these are starting you off from a much better, uh, much better place. And they also have nice boots to cover up, so you're not going to be getting uh, a lot of dirt and mud into the slider shaft. It's, it's, a, it's a slider shaft system, and they're all plastic. And when you get dirt in there, they start to, to clog up, and it messes with the suspension action, actually, more than the drive action. So those are covered. Also, the pillow balls are covered from behind. You can see the, the little blue dust boots on those. So that's cool. Uh, it has relatively beefy uh, knuckles now. These, uh, these tires, good old chevrons, man. Uh, just classic monster truck fare right there. Um, you know, nothing says monster truck like chevron tires. And uh, I, I appreciate seeing these are not the best for just about anything, but they sure do look cool. You know, the tractor style, I really appreciate that. This is the brushed version, so it does still have 14 millimeter hexes. I mentioned earlier, why do they, why do they include 17 millimeter hexes? Well, the, the brushless edition actually has 17 millimeter hexes to be able to handle more torque. They do have a uh, uh, newer style these days of the wheels with the, the full on chrome. They used to be satin chrome, now it's a, now it's a real shiny chrome. And they just have standard little uh, lock nuts for the wheels on this version. I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit so you can see a little bit from underneath. There we go. And you can see they now have a center skid, which they didn't have back in the old days. But front and rear skids appear to be the same. And if the same style of, uh, of braces underneath, but they are now braced in the middle, which is gonna help out uh, with the stability and rigidity quite a bit. They also actually re uh, lowered the batteries just ever so slightly by angling them down at a little bit of an angle. It just brings them down a little bit lower than they used to be. They used to sit uh, up at this level here. So let me see if you can see it directly from the side. Yeah, there we go. That's a good angle. So they used to sit, this used to be the deck, the base of the chassis right here, and they would sit flat across at that level. Now they've angled them down, so the weight is actually coming down here a little bit uh, without really taking away from any of the useful ground clearance of the vehicle. So, you know, as you're going over really rough terrain, rocky stuff, uh, if, you, if you go over something and then come down on it, so a large thing is right here, still has good, good clearance there, and the, the angle will help to keep things from getting unnecessarily stuck, you know, parts of terrain from getting stuck and holding you back and keeping you from using your momentum to push right through. It's kind of interesting that the motors nowadays with the new transmission setup are, are offset. So it's designed to be able to accommodate a one motor setup with a, with a brushless uh, system uh, that will put it put the motor right in the middle. But when they're doing the brushed version, they just stuck the other motor off to the side. The old, uh, the old Emacs had two motors, but they were they were centered about the center line, so just on either side of the center line. It looks kind of weird, and it definitely will make your weight balance be a little bit off. So it's a little bit heavier on the right. I seriously doubt it's going to make that big of a difference, though, because this entire vehicle is just so heavy. I mean, it is, it is, it is a proper monster, and it has a lot of heavy-duty parts in it. So I don't think I'm, I'm going to be able to really feel the difference from that even if I don't make any adjustments to the suspension uh, to account for it. Speaking of suspension, I wanna show you the, just what the suspension looks like 
in general here we do have three positions at the top for shock mounting and now four down here at the bottom so that is cool and it's going to allow you to run a much stiffer setup without having to buy new springs and, and change out the oil on all eight shocks so i will definitely be trying that out after running this over some really rough terrain i'll, I'll stiffen it up by moving out to the outer hole here and out to the outer holes here and then i'll probably give it some more uh, some more preload spacing and see how it ends up handling uh, uh, just with that setup without any other changes so there you go that's the modern traxxas emax brushed edition if you have any questions about why i got the brushed edition versus the brushless edition just see the video description be sure to read through all of the frequently asked uh, questions there um, i will of course be driving this thing and i will give it a proper review it might not be a super long one since this vehicle has been out for so long so long but um, i will definitely give it proper tests on multiple surfaces and give you also some raw driving videos without uh, without a lot of editing and hopefully without music and uh, yeah all that stuff is is yet to come and uh, fingers crossed that this will do well if it doesn't uh, i'm actually going to hold on to it actually whether it does well or not i'm going to hold on to it for a little while longer after the review to hopefully do at least one tune-up video to show you uh, some simple things that you can do to make this much better uh, hopefully spending not too much money uh, to to get the most out of the Traxxas Emax without doing a total conversion and without you know selling it and getting a more expensive vehicle so that's it for now for the Traxxas Emax brushed edition unboxing thank you very much for watching and uh, please hit the like button on the video if you like the video if you didn't like the video please hit the thumbs down button on it either way i appreciate your feedback and i hope to see you on the friendly forums at ultimaterc.com where we do have a long standing traxxas emax specific forum as well as forums for other monster trucks and just about everything else rc related so i'll talk to you again soon